Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey, it's Monica Garrett. Hi. Uh, hi, Monica. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. We are uh, thrilled to have another member guest episode today. So for everyone tuning in, as you heard, I'm joined by Monica. Monica is a Knock Academy member and is also a longtime client of both mine and Nikki's and uh, someone that we've known through through many different fitness channels. And I'm excited to share another another story, another journey. And I really love these episodes. And it is the one of the number one reasons why we started the podcast was to kind of share these stories and have these conversations because they are so important mm -hmm. for others to hear. So, and look, we connected, I want to say it was probably six, seven years ago, maybe initially. Around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Via some, some small group training, we were, you know, connected also through the world of group fitness. Um, and we'll, we'll hear a little bit about your experiences with group fitness and how we kind of aligned there as well. And it's been a, um, it's been a journey of many different environments and online mm -hmm. and, you know, some one-on-one -on -one work as well with Nikki, as well as kind of, you know, your group and then coming into online. So we're going to hear all about that today. Yep. However, I always love to start because I have this, I see this correlation with everyone I talk to with where they're currently at in their fitness journey, when they started that fitness journey and how those early influences in life are affect that because we get very imprinted on what we experience, what we see. So I'd love to start by just hearing a little bit about kind of, I guess, childhood or wherever you want to go back to, you know, younger life and, you know, maybe what you see, what you saw in regards to kind of fitness and movement and exercise, nutrition, health, and how that kind of impacted you kind of early on, you know, before those kind of teenage years came. So Garrett, I, uh, I discovered fitness later in life. I have to admit that I am the youngest of eight kids. Uh, which is a lot of kids. And frankly, my mom never pushed me to be active. She did push me to play and interact with kids, but, but she really didn't encourage me much to be part of a sport. She wasn't against it, but she didn't encourage me. And I did need a little nudge. And, and you know, being the youngest, and I did suffer a lot with weight problems, which I still have. <laughs> And so that didn't contribute either because I felt I didn't belong. Uh, I'm not, you know, skinny enough. I'm not muscular enough. So all this to say, it, it really took me a long time to get into some sort of activity on a continuous basis because I don't consider doing, you know, ping pong or playing something once a week, every two weeks or something like that. A, a fitness activity was just for fun, right? So I really started late. I started in my 30s and, and no turning back. Um, I really wish I could have done it earlier because uh, the, ben the benefits have been immense. I, I can't even number them. So, um, but yeah, that's a little bit about my, my journey. Not, I have to admit, not, not since early childhood. It was very late in life. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's quite a common story for a lot of people. And, and especially with your upbringing, you know, having so many siblings and mm -hmm. it is, I guess, being in the situation where, like you said, your mom, it was probably, if you want to do it, do it. However, how do you even navigate that? Like, I think it's hard trying to organize one child's like dance classes and dance lessons, let alone trying to do that for eight kids. So I can imagine that would be really challenging. Like you said, to kind of go out and play, but if you're naturally you know, maybe you're naturally leaning into other things and, you know, maybe it's a, you know, you have a very creative side and maybe you're into art or you're very academic is it would be easy to lean on those things and not necessarily get the activity that you wanted. And, and it would be hard if you didn't get the time and the attention and not to say that, you know, <laughs> your mom was doing a bad job with that, but not to get that time and attention when you've got yeah. so much going on. Right. It's really yeah. difficult. It was exactly. And, and also Garrett, so I come from Columbia um, I'm going to age myself a little bit, but, but things were different back then. Uh, obviously society has evolved like everywhere else in the world, but there was more in my mom's head, I guess, the idea of, well, eventually you kind of are going to get married and you might have children. So you, you should learn things that mom should know. Right. So if you don't want to go and play sports, that's okay because you stay home and I'm going to teach you how to do this, or I'm going to, you know, we're going to share this activity together. <laughs> because potentially that's what you're going to be doing. 
Uh, not that she never pushed us for, for marriage in any way, but, you know, I, I guess that's the way she was uh, brought up. And, and so that was kind of in her mind, you know, boys do this, girls do that, and girls do not necessarily are active and play sports. Yeah, no, and I, and I, and I can see that. I even think about, you know, I was, I was at school, what it would have been kind of, I guess that's how secondary school would have been like early nineties for me. And, and even then it was, it was obvious that there were subjects and things that were more for the girls in the school, right? Like you go and do home economics, like you had to learn to bake and you exactly. and then boys did woodwork. Like, and I think now that like you, you definitely wouldn't get away with that in school anymore. But um, even in the nineties, like I still had that growing up in England and it was a very mm -hmm. similar thing. Like you were kind mm -hmm. of, it was like, you need these, and it sounds ridiculous to say, but you need these skills to go and be a housewife. Yeah, exactly. A, yeah. That, parent. That's and I studied on Catholic, so I started in a Catholic school. So again, it was it was it wasn't that conservative, but in a way it was because yeah, you gotta learn to bake, you gotta learn to cook, you gotta be you know <laughs> be proper and do this thing. So and, and like I said, because of my weight situation, I I always I like the sports. I like we used to play. I mean, it's not a sport, but we used to play kickball or softball was one of the things I liked in volleyball. But I always felt like. I don't fit, right? I'm not like them. Um, I never liked running. So whenever we were training in the few occasions that I tried to do something, so I was always a little behind. And so the coach was upset because I wasn't fast enough. And then it was like, you know what? Just forget it. This is not for me. Just go back to baking or um, or studying, which is what I was doing, reading and, and studying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that really resonates with me. And I know a lot of people listening will, will also resonate with that, I'm sure. And I had a very similar experience. So I had a, 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 you know, growing up where if I wanted to do it, I was encouraged to, but I was also encouraged mm -hmm. to do whatever I basically wanted, which I'm very grateful for. But mm -hmm. due to, you know, my mum, my dad working all day, coming home, my mum going out to work in the evening, like there wasn't a lot of like, we're going to drive you to sport and we're going to drive yeah. you. Like I hear about the, <laughs> I always yeah. laugh when I hear the hockey parents stories of where they're like on the road yeah. and my cousin has this yeah. with her kids and you know, it's, it's, it's nonstop. So we didn't have that as kids either. And my brother was, it was very naturally athletic and played a lot of football and he was very much in that. And, and I just, I kind of did a little bit, but I had a very exp similar experience to you, Monica, in that I didn't feel like I belonged. Like I was carrying a little bit of weight. I wasn't, I wasn't definitely wasn't comfortable in my skin and, you know, didn't know who I was. And I struggled with that because I ended up just being basically that you were like, well, yeah, you can play and we need, we need someone to go in goal. So we'll put yeah. the fat kid in goal because you take up more of the goal and you don't run very fast. So the best place is for you. I'm very yeah. fortunate that it stuck and I actually became a pretty good goalkeeper. Um, but just, I guess, because I was thrown in goal and had the ball booted at me over and over again, but you, you do, you do feel that. And I never really, I don't think I ever committed to it fully because I didn't feel that. And, and I think this is a, such a beautiful space for kids now within fitness because it's not that team sport where you have to be the same as everybody else but you can still be in that community environment and and i think this travels through and i love seeing this i love seeing crossfit for kids and boot camp for kids and stuff where you can just go be who you are show up as you are and get that support and feel connected to the community it's and if i'm sure if we had that we would have had a very different experience oh totally yeah, totally because also in in the fitness community now there are so many options right like in sports is either you're good like you said or not or you're competitive or not and you're either playing soccer or football or volleyball but in fitness you know you can do your weights you can do your dance you can do cycling you can do uh, uh metcon so there are so many options and there's always something that you are inclined to do and I agree. I, I really love what's happening. And thankfully we have now that for kids today. So, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I'm, 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 I guess we're quite fortunate that we, um, that we weren't sure we were always worried, right? Cause two fitness parents were like, what if she just doesn't want to do something like what we get, we got to find something. We yes. were fortunate. She followed in mummy's footsteps and, and she yes. loves dancing right now, yes. which is great, yes. but it's an expressive creative outlet where it's not too heavily focused on, yes, she needs to be able to perform, but it's quite individual as well. So I think that's a, a nice spot for her, but you know, not everyone's wants to be in that creative space. So yeah, I really, I really love that that's changing in mm -hmm. the world of fitness and we're seeing what fitness can do for our strength, conditioning, mindset, 
uh, you know, <laughs> confidence and not maybe more what we grew up with, which was exercises is, is all to do with your weight. And that is yes. where we, what we were sold. Right. And, and what we kind of used it for. So yeah, that was, um, that, that's so important. And I love that you, you were able to share those kind of struggles early on and because it really starts to paint the picture. And now I guess fast forward high school, you know, studying college, university, et cetera. You kind of went through that part of your journey. It sounds like without really the influence of fitness and exercise, how did that as a kind of, you know, teenage girl into kind of adulthood, how did without exercise present, how did nutrition start to play a part? And did you have any kind of positive experiences with that negative experiences with that? So, like I said, I, I have always a struggle with my weight and I'm the typical yo-yo person up and down, up and down. Um, and so since early age, and I was exposed then to diets, um, to, to programs to help me lose weight or maintain the weight. So nutritionally speaking, I guess, because I was exposed to doctors and nutritionists since early age, I consider myself having a, a decent knowledge into what I should and should not eat. I do admit that as I have grown older, my my taste buds have changed. So I was I always had a sweet tooth, but now I crave more vegetables. I crave more uh, grains. Before uh, I love creamy stuff, <laughs> so every time I could, I would eat pasta alfredo. Or you know, if I had a salad, then the salad was yeah maybe some spinach and lettuce and tomatoes, but then I would add cheese and nuts and, and tons of dressing. <laughs> um, so those were kind of my 20s uh, fried stuff because I come again from a culture that we love fried food. So we, we ate a lot of fried, um, not deep fried, but still fried stuff, lots of starches. So it, it has been an evolution in spite of me saying that I, I have some knowledge, which I do from my exposure again to doctors and things, but just because of the culture I guess my 20s were still a little bit aggressive in terms of the foods uh, that I was eating, like lots of carbs and heavy stuff. And then as, as I grew, became 30 and older, then it's like, yeah, I need to balance it better. And, and I really enjoy now more than ever it, having vegetables and, and proteins and grains, which I did like before, but not as much as I do now. Yeah, that, that really shows that there's a big influence in what we eat growing up and that can be very in your experience i imagine very culturally a big shift i'm ass i'm assuming so excuse my ignorance but i'm yeah. assuming the the food and the culture growing up in Colombia is very different than maybe what you were exposed with when you came to canada and i'm sure the it palate is. and the type mm -hmm. of foods are very different mm -hmm. it is you're right yeah mm -hmm. you're not being ignorant at all it is different and and it's also you know again how you're brought up so my mom tried to keep it balanced so she always um, I don't want to say forced us, but she always, we always had salad. We always had some sort of vegetable. But again, we always had the carbs and sometimes fried stuff. And she was like, you got to finish that. You don't leave the table until you finish that. And it's not that she gave us good portions. But then again, sometimes you were full, but she was saying you need to finish it. So that didn't help me with my weight struggles. Um, and, and eventually... You know, little by little, I have um, learned, and I'm still learning, obviously, to, to be more mindful about the, the proportion and what I'm eating and, and, and balance it better. But it, it has taken me a while. I, I wish I knew this when I was in my 20s. <laughs> So many things I wish I knew, Monica, that yeah. I, I, I didn't know when I was 20. Um, yeah, that's a that's a big one. And this is actually a struggle. I know that there's lots of, um, you know, lots of our people that listen, uh, you know, busy parents, much like myself and Nikki are. And, you know, trying to trying to navigate the dinner table with kids is really tough. I only have one. <laughs> if I'm at eight of you. Um, but this is something that gets imprinted on us. And we we develop like and not that our parents are were even aware of it i'm sure but i did it i developed this unnatural or this kind of like uh, disordered behavior around you need mm -hmm. to finish your meal when you finish mm -hmm. your meal you can have this and you know yeah. i had that and i think it comes from their generation you know my i guess my mum and dad were 40s 40s 50s where they were born and grew up and it was it was different like it, you only had a small amount of food it was rationed like you ate everything it was and, post war mm -hmm. right and you, it comes from that place of, and I know because I, I feel it so deeply as it comes from a place of love and care where I want you to be full and I want you to have energy and I want you to make sure your body recovers from a busy day of 
dancing or exercising or being at school and you you want to encourage your children to eat their food however no one is a better judge of when they're full and when they're hungry than a kid like they're just they're so dialed into it and then we're like oh but you'll fill up okay great we'll eat this yes yes <laughs> so, exactly and it's it's a minefield every day i'm like i wonder if we're messing up our kid i don't know but <laughs> i'm trying my best but it's trying to it's trying to find that and i think as adults we need to look at you know our relationships with food based mm. on just because we were exposed a certain way to food is it doesn't mean that that now is the it has to be the way in which we eat right and we don't have to clear our plate every time we eat and i actually did this today myself i was like I i'm full and there's food on my plate and even he was like feeling all right i'm like yeah, yeah. i'm just i'm full up and i'm yeah. not gonna have any more of that i might enjoy something later when i feel like yeah. it but that's a really hard thing for me to do. And it was always, you know, finish your meal and you can have dessert. So we're not only going to force feed you, but now we're going to give you more calories. Exactly. That was the other thing. So you have to finish in order to eat your sweets. And at home, we always had dessert. It was homemade. My mom, because again, growing up, it's not like we had the processed foods that we have today. And some of them were natural. And I'm using quotation marks because it was based on like she made out of figs or blackberries or um, what was the a guava but but it had a lot of sugar so it wasn't really healthy even though it was fruit based and, and same thing like you gotta finish this and you will have your dessert and me having a sweet tooth is like okay i gotta finish this but to your point it, it's amazing how much is that that's embedded and it's, it's as an adult you, you do have to overcome and say you know what i'm full and i don't i don't want any more of this and then like you said later because i want to enjoy something else i'm going to stop now so i can eat the, the other stuff later yeah <laughs> and how hard it is that we need to give our permission like well i'm a fully grown adult if i want to stop eating my meal now and eat dessert i will <laughs> <laughs> and i don't need anyone's permission i can um, actually start with dessert <laughs> yeah I'm like, think, yeah, sometimes I randomly do that too. And this is actually something I've picked up through my own study of yeah. nutritional coaching is to have that with, with Harley sometimes is I just, maybe I'll just throw fruit on her plate with her meal. And, and in some cultures that's very normal, but it, for me, it's not like when we, we always had something like that after I'm like, oh yeah, you can eat it now. Like no problem. Like have that now if you want it. And, you know, and we, we always talk to, this is a really good tip as well for anyone listening that, you know, wants the guidance with nutrition is just create balance like it doesn't have like we don't force it but when we said there's protein on your plate there's carbs on your plate there's fats on your plate and there's vegetables on your plate eat some of everything that's yeah, it good. that's all we ask yeah. like mm -hmm. you're gonna have it like we today we had we had a salad with some spaghetti and meatballs i was like you can eat <laughs> all the spaghetti if yeah. you want but make sure you have some protein make sure yeah. you have some salad even oh, if veggies. you don't want mm -hmm. all of it right mm -hmm. because it's such a it's such a it is a minefield and it and it and it affects us throughout life. So I love that you shared that. And, and, and I know that will resonate with a lot of people, you know, generationally, it's very different. Like whether you're managing your own nutrition or your kids' nutrition, it can be, it can be a, it can be a tricky one. So uh, what I'd love to move on to now is a little bit about, I guess, your, your thirties, not just your thirties, but where that kind of journey with fitness started. So obviously we heard about the kind of nutrition and those, you know, that kind of navigating that when it, and it is a bit of a twisting winding road when you got to your 30s what happened with fitness and how did you start mm -hmm. to get kind of exposed to that so i i guess my body started craving some movement and i did join a gym but again i come from colombia it's a country that is uh, i would say humanity is based on looks, <laughs> a lot of relationships, but my country is heavily on the looks. So again, I felt like I didn't belong, um, but but I, I kind of go like, I, I, I like this. And I, I started feeling better when I did it. So little by little, I started doing uh, a little more uh, and I didn't have the concept again of mixing it up. I did understand that I needed some cardio, which I didn't like, <laughs> to be honest. And I go like, what am I gonna do for cardio? So I tried the step. Uh, which I kind of liked it, but then I felt bad because I wasn't doing, sometimes the, the steps had the risers and I didn't. So anyway, um, so I just started doing that. And then when I moved to Canada, it was a huge change in my lifestyle. So for a year and something, you know, adapting to the country, finding a new job, et cetera, et cetera. And, and then I realized again, like I, I need to do something. And I went to a gym and I discovered like, you know, everyone is okay to be here. It doesn't matter your size, as long as you're here and you're doing something. 
And I started meeting, you know, wonderful coaches and instructors in, in the variety of classes and hearing about, you know, balancing it out, do some stretching, do mobility. That's that's something I learned with you and Nikki. Never heard from that one before, but, you know, the strength and, and the cardio. And I go, oh, I can do this. Oh, and there is this, this dancing class that I kind of can do. So I um, being in Canada, I think, helped me big time with the exercise because then I, I, I kind of left the guard of, I don't belong here at the door. And I said, yes, I do belong here. And, and kind of started understanding also that I'm not competing. I'm doing what I can do. And, and some people, again, like you and Nikki, that you're also very mindful of you're a beginner and this is what you do. Or if you have this, um, you know, impediment or this hurts, then then stop. And because before it was do it, even if it hurts. Now, now it was a different concept. Like, no, 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 if this is not for you, then, then this is the modification. And that's how uh, I kind of started. And then I started attending more and more classes and, and discovering things that I liked and enjoyed and, and kind of like, okay, now, I, now I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm not going back to not doing anything. <laughs> you, 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 you made so many points and I want to highlight them for anyone that's listening and, and thinking about maybe not belonging or thinking they need to show <laughs> up in a, in a certain way or a certain outfit or a certain look, or they need to, I hear this all the time. I need to be fit before I go to that class or fit before I go to the gym is I love that you had such a beautiful experience that you stepped into the world of fitness, the gym, whatever that might be for, for anyone who's embarking on the journey is that you felt like you belonged and you could just show mm -hmm. up as you. And yeah. I can guarantee you that there are people listening and myself and lots of, you know, lots of our clients that, haven't had that experience when they first stepped in and whether this is just a cultural thing it might be a generational thing it mm -hmm. might just be the gym you went to but if you can find somewhere like that and i think we're doing a better job in the fitness industry slowly but surely getting there where we create this place where everyone truly is welcome mm -hmm. and you know if you're there and you're doing something and you're improving your health and well-being mm -hmm. then you belong there and you deserve to be there yeah totally. and that's so powerful so powerful yeah. and so anyone listening, if, if you are in an environment where you're not experiencing that, my advice is leave and go somewhere yeah. else. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Find somewhere <laughs> else. Right. And, you know, maybe that's, and this is where we have these beautiful options of the gym in person, but maybe you want to come online and maybe you just don't want to turn your camera on for the first few weeks. Maybe you just want to kind of hang out and it's almost like hanging out and hiding in the very back of the studio in a class or whatever it might be hiding on the bike <laughs> in the corner. Right. And, and that's okay. And, and maybe it's just finding that and feeling comfortable, but you should be, and we're going to dig into this a little bit later, but mm -hmm. when you look for coaches and you look for people and you look for those support systems and, you know, staff at the gym are that, are that, you know, that support mm -hmm. system is, you want to feel comfortable and you want to make sure they make you feel like regardless of where you're on your journey, we can meet yep. you where you're at. And and that, that comes with great skill and great understanding. So yeah. that's important. And the one other thing you said, which is so important is you started to find things that you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. That is something we miss. And we touched on how sometimes fitness has been sold to us like that you know it's all about weight loss and it's you got to work harder and if you aren't you know dying at the end of it and you can't walk then mm -hmm. it's successful well that's oh. absolute crap and yeah. it needs Thank to you. be enjoyable mm -hmm. and and honestly working out some of the intensities of the programs out there and the workouts out there it's not enjoyable to do it sometimes depending on your personality but it's also then if you can't walk for three days and sit on the toilet, like it's not building sustainable habits yeah. for anybody. So you yeah, got to find so stuff you love. Yeah. And, and I have to admit, Garrett, it's not that it's easy, right? Like I'm not saying because I like doing weights or I like doing medcom. I hate some of the stuff we do. I hate it in the moment. Like you say, you got to do 10 burpees. It's like, <laughs> why do I have to do this stupid burpees? And then... When I haven't done them in months, it's like, wait, what's the burpee again? And I have to do what? Um, but but then again, the overall program and environment and 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 coaching and advice, yeah, that that makes it enjoyable. Even if at the moment you are in a little bit of pain and you're like not really liking it too much. <laughs> yeah, and I think that again, there's, I mean, there's so many factors we could dig into on that, but it's the there's going to be struggle in those successes. Mm -hmm. And it, I always, I love that, that you said, you know, it's not, it's not easy, but what happens mm -hmm. is 
the when you find things you enjoy to do and you you can enjoy the process of it sometimes as you alluded to you can enjoy the feeling of wanting to get into that environment whether that's walking into the class and loving the environment or logging on knowing that other people are going to be there and your favorite coaches are going to be there and also loving that I'm done. Like, you know, and we always laugh, like, what was your favorite bit today? And some smart ass is always like the stretch, yeah. um, <laughs> but you can enjoy the success of the finish yes. and it, it's a package. So that's yeah. so important, but okay. it's also the, you have to enjoy the, it, all different parts of it for different reasons. And mm -hmm. what happens is it never becomes easy, but when you find things you love, the process of everything involved so from getting up to getting in the session to making sure you're scheduling it to all the things that come into it that habit becomes simple exactly and yeah. that's what we're looking for we're looking for a simple frictionless mm -hmm. habit building and it comes from finding things you enjoy to do whatever that looks like for you and when we make it simple guess what you turn up you're consistent so and well. things mm -hmm. fit into place right Yes. And then so, if I may add, Gareth, the other component is that community component. So for me, I was never good at working out on my own. And by my own means, even nowadays with all the options that are there, I, I want to be held accountable. And accountability comes not only by showing up, but having our coaches like you and Nikki uh, and Trevor and the others, but but also having the, the people, even if I'm not seeing them in person because we're doing this online, I know they're there and, and they're there and I should be there. And what if I'm taking a break? No, no, keep going because the other ones are going or when we have sets and like, oh, it might be behind because I see people doing this. Is that their third set? I'm still in the first. So yeah, it's, it's also that community part for me that, that was crucial as well because I made friends in, in the way, along the way at the gym. So it became like a, a huge component of my happiness, if I could say it like that. <laughs> oh, you, I mean, it's, you know, you want to, you want to get right down to, to, you know, evolution and, you know, us as human beings is belonging and connection is, is mm -hmm. huge, right? Like we're, 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 so, you know, for, for all the positives and the negative is that we're, we're wired to fit in and belong somewhere, right? Because yeah. if you didn't do that thousands and thousands of years ago, then you weren't in the tribe and you were dead. <laughs> so we're we, it's wired into us and we want to we want to find those places but we also mm -hmm. need to make sure that these places are positive for us yeah. right because we can often fit in and it not be positive so i'm so mm -hmm. glad that you know you found that through those many different um environments you were in and that mm -hmm. also led to another incredible part of your story which i know a little bit about but we're going to talk about it now is not only did you experience those group environments and the classes you went to at the gym but it actually took you on another journey so tell us a little bit about what happened when you found group fitness and how you evolved yes so um again finding the group fitness was uh amazing because it helped me tremendously with my um my physical being and my emotional well-being and i like the routine and i like the structure and particularly of cycling and you know having probably i was doing maybe three four times a week and I really like the music and the connection between what was happening in that music and then seeing the instructors on stage doing the things. And, and for some reason, sometimes I will remember like when they play certain songs and did certain uh, tracks, I, I kind of knew what, what was happening. And so a few of them said, you seem to enjoy this a lot. Why, why don't you take the journey to become an instructor? And I was like, uh, no, <laughs> um, I don't look like an instructor. Uh, you know, English is my second language. I don't know if I could do this. So again, all these barriers that sometimes are real and sometimes are not, in many occasions are not. And but but little by little, then I, I started thinking maybe I could do it and, and maybe I could give it a try. And I talked again to different instructors, kind of um, understanding their opinion and, and seeing if they would think I would be okay or good being this instructor. And, and nobody said no. Everyone said, yes, what are you waiting for? Like, you will be awesome at this and you have this and you have qualities that I didn't even know I had or think I don't have. And, and then that's how I started my journey by, uh, because I love that. I, I got a little bit of encouragement. I questioned myself and then I, I connected with friends and, and other instructors and also gathered their um, feedback. And then I said, okay, let's, let's dive into this. And, and I took the course and 
it wasn't easy. I'm not going to deny it because, again, I was a little shy. I wasn't looking like the others. Um, the process involved the filming of a video. And, and I practice a lot, Gareth. Like, I'm not camera friendly. Like, I, you see, I don't, I'm not very good with these social things and, and cameras. But, but at home, I, I practice it. I, I, I nailed that choreography. I, I did my script. Uh, and the first time I submitted the video, the instructor that who was in the class with me, you were great. I think you're going to pass. And then a few weeks later, I get, wow, 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 you don't pass. And I was like, what? <laughs> what did I do wrong? Like I did everything. And, and I, in my head, I kept, I kept thinking, what did I do wrong? And I was this close to give up. I said, you know what? Forget it. They, they gave you another chance. They, uh, I, I don't know what the process is today, but nowadays, and at that time, as you had your video, if you didn't pass it, you had a month to resubmit, and then you will either be accepted or not. And uh, um, Andrew Harvey, uh, who is an instructor as well, and you might know him, anyway, he, he was a tremendous influence, and, and he was like, nope, I'm not, not letting you quit. And then somebody else also in the group fitness was like, no, nope, you got to continue doing, you got to be you. And I kind of like, okay, let's get up and shake all this negativity and, and try it again. And, and then I submitted and I said, you know, que sera, sera, what it is, it is. And, and I send it. And then like literally two days later, I get the email and I'm like, oh my God, do I want to open this? And you know how the email sometimes gives you the preview and it's like, congrats. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know what I did wrong in the first one, or maybe the the uh, person revising it wasn't having a good day, or whatever it is, or maybe I did a lot of mistakes that I don't remember. But yeah, so I I uh, but I was this close to give up that journey because they because they rejected me the first time. So well, it, that's incredible to hear, and I love that even through the the struggles and you know the things you shared that you've been able to take that kind of joy and what you found that you enjoyed and, and, you know, and, and share that with other people, which is why I'm sat here right now. Um, yes. you know, finding that and keeping doing it for, for 20 years, but you, you raised some, you know, some really good points, the, the ability to take that, um, that setback and however yeah. you want to frame it, someone will frame it, could frame it as a failure. You can frame it as a setback, whatever that is. It's a barrier to, to getting the it's success you're looking mm -hmm. for. Yeah. And, and, initially hearing your story and that you got into exercise a bit later and you know we share that common kind of lack of belonging sometimes in, mm -hmm. in the world of fitness and i still find that now and i've been hanging around for 20 odd years doing it but i still get that a little bit and i really understand that and i know how it is how much of a brave step it is to do something like that what do you think is your I don't know. What's your tip, I guess? Like, how did you make that brave decision to just go for it? And how did you have the resilience to, to resubmit, even though you wanted to quit? Like, can you, can you summarize that? And if someone else is thinking they're going on a similar journey and anything in life is how did you get to that point? And what tips can you share? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing Gareth is to, you're doing something that you love and, and it's worth persevering. And then maybe you might have other setbacks or maybe like in my case, you will succeed. You just don't know until you get there, right? Uh, I did have the luxury or the uh, luck of having people supporting me as well. So if I will suggest for anyone who is in kind of this struggle, if you don't have anyone who is on your side, who is able to tell you the truth, I'm not saying... They're going to sugarcoat everything and, oh, my God, you're perfect. And I don't understand how come you didn't pass this. No, no, no. They're going to tell you things as they are. But they are on your side supporting you and helping you, raising you when you are really feeling down. So that would be perhaps the other uh, suggestion that I would give is if they don't have a mentor or a friend or a coach that can help them guide that journey they should find someone because again, if, there, if it is something that they love and enjoy doing it, especially in this fitness world, when you are influencing directly or indirectly so many people that you're making a people say when they come to your class and they have a good class and they go home feeling, oh my God, I, that was awesome. And that music they play, like we don't know this if they don't tell us, but I am hoping that's the way the members, when I teach a class, they go home satisfied and saying, I wouldn't have missed that class. I'm so glad I made it. 
Um, so because we do that and we influence the, these uh, people's lives, I would encourage everyone to continue their journey and find the support they need from a friend or a coach that will help them and, and just keep trying. Yeah, uh, massive. And whatever is in your life, whatever kind of barriers are there or setbacks you have, that's really great advice. And I live by the uh, something a really good friend of mine kind of exposed me to. And it's the, it's the statement that it's as simple as surround yourself. Like if you mm -hmm. surround yourself with the right people, mm -hmm. and this could be a community, this could be yeah. a coach, this could be, you know, much like you said, is somebody that, that keeps you on track, keeps you motivated, mm -hmm. tells you the truth. Like this is where I try and put myself forward as a coach in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Is to say to people, I'm here to offer you that. Like if you surround yourself with me, I'm going to make sure that we build some successes, right? And, and I'm going to be there to hold you accountable to that. And I mm -hmm. think we need friends around us. You made a great point. You need people that are going to be honest with you. And yeah. that's a hard thing to do. Like we don't like as human beings to say, well, you sucked at that. Yeah, no, no, right? that's I heard everyone's feelings. Yeah. yeah. And I know it's a big struggle I've had in the industry as well is finding people that will tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, and I've been very, I'm very honored to have lots of opportunities to stand up and present and be in front of a lot of people. But sometimes then people won't do that. And it's hard to know where to turn when you need yeah. support like that. I need someone to say, tell me what I need to do better. And I'm like, oh, no, you're great. Like, I don't need you to tell me I'm great. <laughs> I'm like, that's fine. I don't get to this point in my career without being good at what I do. Yeah. Tell me how I can be better, right? So that's an important thing. If that's work, if that's your relationships, if that's, you know, you as a parent, like whatever it is, mm -hmm. like we all need those people. So yeah, that's really uh, powerful advice. And, and as you said, you've alluded to it many times is we find things we love. Mm -hmm. And then when we find things, we love it. it kind of it gives us that. I talk about this a lot, you know, in many areas of my life is we need to understand why why we're showing yeah. up, why we're doing yeah. what we're doing, why we're making the choices mm -hmm. we make. And if you can keep that front of mind, I think that helps us make those brave steps when, when we don't want to, when we're scared and we're fearful, we still do it. Cause taking brave steps is not, um, is not the absence of fear. It, no. You do it anyway. Right. It's still there. Like I do, I make brave decisions. I'm still scared when I do it, but I do it but because I know I'm doing it for the right reason. So yeah. really important. And, Love that. And then I would add, something else that I do struggle a lot still at my age but it's also believing in yourself so again if it is something that you love and and, and you know and, and you know it because internally we don't lie to ourselves we we know deep inside if this is good for us or not and so if, if, if someone is pursuing and finding the struggles either in fitness or like you said in any way or aspect of life but if you believe you're in the right track then then you are in your right track and you just got to believe that you have that ability to conquer and achieve that goal that you have and continue persevering yeah if you keep taking small steps and you're you know you can stay on track because you're doing it for the right reason mm -hmm. i absolutely agree you'll get there eventually and even when you feel like trust me someone who runs a small business you you feel like it's never gonna quite get exactly where you want it to be and then <laughs> You know, some days you have really good days and really good months and other times it sucks. So but you have to keep remembering why you're doing that. And, you know, that's been a two year process. So, so we went through this incredible journey and we got kind of, you know, let's kind of bring it up a bit more, you know, to the current day, if you like, or the current couple of years is you came along with us on this journey of, you know, starting an online business. We were connected as you, as, as everybody heard through many fields. And then you decided, yep, yeah, I'm going to train online with, with Gareth and Nikki, and we all know that COVID had a massive impact on this, but I'd love to hear kind of your thoughts on, you know, initially whether you thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to train online. I, I, some of our clients are like, no, I hated the idea. And then when I did it, it was great. So you, you can definitely say that if you want, but is how did that kind of initially hit you with, you know, am I going to do this online? What's it going to be like? And, and what have your experiences been in the last year or so? Yeah. So let me start by saying, and I, I think I have told you this before, and Nikki, and, and not because we're doing the podcast, I will say it to anyone. I think you both are excellent, magnificent, uh, not only human beings, but trainers, the way you coach a class, the, the time you put in preparing the class, uh, the thought behind. I, I have to say, I know a lot of instructors and not a lot of them do what you guys do. Every class that I come with you and Nikki is well prepared, is well thought, 
and, and as a as a participant, as a member, you appreciate that. It's not like, oh, what am I gonna do today? Oh yeah, let's play these tracks and I'll, I'll figure it out along the way. Um, so that was one thing, knowing that I was in very good hands, knowing that I was in the hands of very capable and skilled people. So knowing you from before, and then when you guys decided to move on, I went already with that confidence, right? I, I didn't have any doubts. Okay, I had the doubt of sometimes, okay, the money part, <laughs> uh, like we all do because we all have our, our budget. But but leaving that aside, it was like a no-brainer uh, for me. And I, and I have... You know, try to tell people, and anyway, anyway, some people I understand have different different um, challenges or, or situations, and that's why they can't join. So, first of all, that was that. I knew that you guys were going to give a fantastic product, if I could call it like that. In terms of trying classes or, or testing something different, so being in COVID, because of my work, I was already kind of doing online things, so it wasn't totally new to me. I wasn't afraid of that. Yeah, my concern was. And sometimes it still is just because of the um, gadget that I use or the computer. Obviously, when you are in person, it's easier for you as coaches to see what we're doing right or wrong. And it's easier for you to pinpoint and come and say, you know, lift the shoulders or, or, or do this or that. Online, again, and then it's not you. It's on us. If, if you don't see me, you don't see me. You can't correct me, right? Um, so I find uh, that on the online aspect. But but again, it's more on my setting at home that on you guys. You, you're there to help us, but, but you need to see what we're doing. So I, I really, like, don't think it twice. Never hesitated when you guys started because I knew, you know, I knew I was in good hands and I knew you were going to give us excellent uh, classes. And, and again, if I have or had a question about something, you always were there to explain. So, hey, I never done Pilates. Can you can you tell me what that is about? Oh, sure, Monica. This is it, and you know the fundamentals are that, and we do this and this. And you gave me an explanation, and then I said, this is something I can try and do. And you know, I started doing it, and uh, oh, the, the light went off, and not turning back. So you always were there also to answer and are still to answer any questions I have and many of the members have. And, and that gives you so much peace of mind that is like a no brainer. Yeah. There's a big, there's a big trust element in, in many things you do it. And, and trust me, running a business in a massively competitive market. The last time I saw a stat, it, it said there were 355,000 active fitness apps. Um, so talk needle in a haystack. Uh, that's the business we're in, but it is that struggle and we truly appreciate that there's so many people that do trust us and, and and thank you for sharing those things that always makes you feel good when you you know you're trying to do a great job and people experience that as you kind of foresee it to be and it when we when you do that you can really it, it says a lot to building a network of people that, mm -hmm. that trust you and and having that surround yourself with with <laughs> people in your world and when you work really hard at something you can you know for a long time you build that and, and it, you're able to transfer that into a business like we did because without that we wouldn't have a business and you know that was a really important factor for both of us when we started but you know and for anyone listening that maybe runs a small business or is in this kind of same situation is it can be a struggle because mm -hmm. that trust and relationship is what gets people committed and sometimes people will go well why is this any different than doing a YouTube video, right? Why is this any work doing just doing a quick workout, uh, you know, that I downloaded from some fitness influencer, mm -hmm. right? And it's hard to sell that. And, you know, and, and I really appreciate what you said. And I think that that really kind of brings home that when you know you're being looked after, you know, you're going to show up and you're, you're not going to have to think like you can literally log on and book like one minute before and turn up and be like, I need to do nothing right now. I'm here. I know everything's being taken care of for me. I'm good to go. And, you know, we try to provide that as a business and a platform and, and you know, and hopefully that message gets through as well to, to everyone else. So uh, yeah. thank you for sharing that. And, you know, yeah. we're glad that you came with us and, um, and kind of, you know, continued on that fitness journey. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear kind of one more thing that, that always really interests me mm -hmm. when you look at kind of what you do online now and how it fits in your lifestyle and how mm -hmm. your other types of fitness fit in. And I appreciate that it's a different experience, but do you find there's a massive difference in the results that you get, you know, how you feel, you know, be a physical result, but just mm -hmm. because it is a different environment, you know, does it vary a lot? Do you find it very similar and you know anything else along those lines? 
I have the privilege that I'm working from home most of the times and I can accommodate the sessions, the live sessions, because I know you have the on demand, but obviously part of this is, is seeing you guys and doing this live with other people. And so for me, it actually works in my benefit because of that, because I kind of squeeze the class. I, I don't have to worry about the driving and, you know, and, and how am I going to get back home or back to the office. So it, it has been really good from that perspective. The challenge is I don't have all the equipment. So depending on what you're doing, and again, you always gave us the options, but at the gym, you have this massive amount of weight. Um, and you know, you have the kettlebells from zero to 180. Uh, so depending on what you're doing, you're able to go and, and, and challenge yourself a little more. I don't necessarily have that at home, but I do, the little I have has been beneficial so far. And yes, could I have a little more? Um, yes, it would help, but so far it has been good. So to answer is the um, the practicality, the, the ease, of being able to join a class, like you said, literally one minute earlier or a meeting is canceled, like, oops, I have 10 minutes or five minutes, go get ready, set it up, join, <laughs> and you know, I'm ready to go and you guys are ready to go. And I couldn't do that at the, at the gym because just the commute alone will take me a while. And depending on the gym, where I'm gonna park and <laughs> and if I have to use the, the app to sign up. And so that that is a tremendous, benefit from my perspective or for my uh, um, personal situation. It, it's just that the, the, the part of the equipment and I do miss, even though again, you guys try, but I do miss in, in in-person sessions, the fact that you could easily correct me and, and kind of help me because sometimes I'm a slow Garrett and I don't get it. And, and, and I think you guys see my face when you're trying to correct and then what am I supposed to do? Wait, what? Uh, but if I, if you're there kind of, you know, hey, do this or, or something, then, and, oh, okay, I get it more. And that's, but but that's like with everything, right? Like in yeah. life, you get pros and cons, no matter what you're doing. But I, I really enjoy the online option and the flexibility that it brings. Yeah, for sure. And, and and it's definitely right. And I think as well, if you're very, um if you're a very kinesthetic, very tactile person, that's just so beneficial, right? To be able to be corrected. Like I'm a very auditory style learner. So for me, if someone's giving me correction and talking me through it i'm like got it right so for me coaching online actually leads a lot to my skill set because like you teach you know you typically lean on your preferred learning style but yes. yeah if you're tactile or you, you're wanting to feel and be put into that position it there is a gap there and you know we're mm -hmm. always trying to find ways to to navigate that but it's <laughs> tricky and you mentioned one other thing which i think is really important and you being out of for it to be convenient and for you to be able to get in consistently and consistency is the key above everything else. So it's whatever is can, if you're, if you've got a gym in your office or you've got a gym that's on the way home from the mm -hmm. office, like this is the convenience that you need. And you've always got yeah. that, that where if, if a gym's not convenient, but it's got all the equipment, but you only go once a month because it's not convenient, then it's not working for you. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're working at home, you've got minimal equipment, but I can log on four or five times a week and get yeah. training in. It balances exactly. it out so that mm -hmm. overall consistency mm -hmm. is going to lead you towards results. So it's, and, and I love that you shared that so honestly, because mm -hmm. it, it's finding that balance between those two things, which is so important and, and finding the option that works for you because it's, you know, an online training platform isn't for everybody, but it is a super mm -hmm. convenient option for lots of people. And you um, know what, Arita, I have learned with you and Nikki as well, depending on what we're doing, sometimes body weight is okay. And, and you give us those options. You say, okay, we're going to do this. You guys have dumbbells. No, what do you have? Oh, you have this. Okay. So if you have the dumbbell, you do this. If you have the kettlebell, you do that. If you have nothing or a, a resistance, so you always have those options. And that has also allowed me to understand, okay, I may not have all the equipment, but I'm, that is not an impediment. I still can do the exercise and I still uh, get the benefits, even if it is not the most challenging one because I don't have the weight or, or the proper setup yeah yeah mm -hmm. and actually I'll, I'll just share and we're going to wrap up soon but i'll just share that for me the last couple of years and you know i was a bit fearful of starting a business like my office is in the basement the studio's in the basement <laughs> like i just stay in the basement all day <laughs> and and then i got and then i fitted out because we've got our studio space i also fit out a bit of a gym space as well so mm -hmm. i can do some training at home and then i really truly do stay in the basement all day in my bit of my fear there was 
you know, am I going to be, is it pointless me getting, you know, like a half squat rack and some weights and doing some stuff at home. And, and actually in the last two years, I would say I am in the best physical shape I've probably ever been in at 40 years Amazing. old. Amazing. Consistency is a huge part mm-hmm. of that. And for me, the only time I think I was as consistent as I've been, and, and, and I train at one or two days, I might go out to the gym if I'm, you know, out and about, mm-hmm. but predominantly I train at home is it's consistency, but it's consistency, but I'm also managing my stress and my recovery so much better because I'm at yep. home. I'm balancing my days a bit better. The last time I was this consistent, I was probably on the gym floor 14 hours a day training eight or nine clients. And I was in such good shape because I have a gap. I train for 45 minutes yep. and I train again later in the day, but my recovery was poor. My sleep was poor and yeah. I didn't really get great results. I wasn't physically in as good shape <laughs> or mentally. So it's a, it's a real, you know, it's a real balancing out. And my point is that there's a le- many other factors in place when you're making yeah. those decisions. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we're, it surprised me a lot. So hopefully that, that helps someone listening. Um, look, we're pretty much at time here. We're going to start wrapping up, but before we do that, um, Monica, I just want to thank you. Thank you for your honesty, your vulnerability to share a little bit about your story. Um, and, and honestly, from my side, it, it, these shows are, so <laughs> selfish in a way for me because i get to learn so much about all of them is when you run a group training mm-hmm. platform you get very small interactions which are positive yeah. and beneficial but they're mm-hmm. never very deep and mm-hmm. i love these conversations because i get to hear a bit more and i get to spend some time with everyone which is great even though we're uh, you know virtually i still get to share that time <laughs> with everybody so thank you so much for coming on and, and thank you for everything you shared with us thank you gary thank you and i, I again um wish you and nikki you know, lots and lots of continued success. You keep doing what you're doing. You are awesome, honestly. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And I guess the last thank you goes to everybody listening. Thank you for tuning in for another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got something valuable, please consider sharing the episode with someone you love and care about. Uh, this helps the world of podcasting go around and helps get the message out to more people. And while you're there, if you could spare 20 seconds, leave us a five-star review on Apple or on Spotify, or wherever you listen. Uh, we really appreciate it. And it helps get the podcast out to more people. That's it for today's show. And we will catch you next week.